So I tried really hard to find a story that I could tell about this that would be from somewhere in the Middle East without possibly offending anybody. So I decided instead to choose one from India. So I was in India over the summer, and this is me over there. And uh, I met this really crazy dude. It's a, he's a Sandhu, um, so he's a religious leader. And he told me this story that I'd like to share with you. <laughs> this is a story about a water bearer. So he carried two large buckets that hung from his yoke. Um, one on the right was perfect and always delivered the full load of water, while the other on the left was cracked and leaked. And over the course of his several miles journey back to his master's house, the bucket on the left would leak so that more than half of the original water was delivered. One day, when the water bear was filling up his buckets at the stream, a curious fish swam up. And he asked him, water bear, for the past two years, I've watched you come here every single day. And you filled up both buckets, and one of them has leaked. Why do you bother with the second bucket? You don't get any return on your investment for effort. So the water bearer looked up at him, and he said, fish, you must remember that just because a bucket is cracked doesn't mean it's broken. I'm Matthew Morantz, and I'm going to be talking to you about Making Waves Canada. So this organization started in 2009 because we believed that children with disabilities, in particular, needed to have the right to get water safety instruction at an affordable price without barriers to things like um, accessibility and without, um, without the, the added barrier of, uh, of cost. So we created this program that provided them instruction for a very low price of uh, $20 for nine lessons. And so it started in Montreal, where I'm from, and uh, we had 30 children in 2009 and it began to expand all across the country. We got students interested from everywhere. And they just started to get interested in the project. And um, in 2012, I'm proud to tell you that we're now present in 10 cities across Canada. And we've got 450 volunteers um, working towards this goal of providing children with special needs, uh, better outcomes in life. So before I move on to how this relates to the Middle East, I'd just like to show you a quick video, just to give you an idea of how this works and where my passion for this comes from. For the first time on his own, when he was in the pool, it was incredible. I cried. Spinal muscular atrophy is a degenerative disease. So we want to try to keep his muscles as strong as possible. And in order to do that, um, yeah. we have to keep exercises and constant activities and keep him moving like this. <laughs> Hydrotherapy for people who are immobile or don't have the ability to move it is so important just for the movement of their, their joints, their muscles, to be able to, to have him exercise in the water. It should be part of our everyday therapy. This kind of program's great. We can bring him here. The guys are more than willing to help get him in and out of the water, and he enjoys it, and I can just sit here and watch. <laughs> so I met in a about a year and a half ago, this girl called Sarah Minkara, and um, she's amazing. She's um, a young woman who's uh, born in the United States, but uh, ethnically Lebanese, and she suffers from macular degeneration, which means that she's slowly going blind. And she graduated from Wellesley last year. She could do whatever she wanted, 
But instead of going off um, to business school or going off to a high paying job, she decided to go back to Lebanon and she started a camp there for children with um, visual impairments dedicated to the idea that they should be provided with the same services that are provided here in the United States. And I agreed with that. She told me about the situation on the ground in Lebanon where children wouldn't be provided with canes. They wouldn't be provided with the instruction on how to use canes even if they had them. And I asked her, how, how can I help? And so we decided to create a partnership where we would send one of our instructors over to help them help the Lebanese children. And I think this is a really important point, is that what we are trying to do is empower Lebanese students, Lebanese university students, to get involved in this idea of disability rights. And so I'm here talking at a conference where a lot of the stuff that we've been discussing is political. And you might think, what does this have to do with the Arab Spring? One of the ideas around the Arab Spring is that we're working towards better futures. And I'm here today to talk to you just to get you thinking about this idea that we are all created with different skills. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be provided with the same opportunity. Hi, my name is Sarah. I study at the American University of Beirut. I started making Graves Lebanon this November together with three other volunteers. We started through a fundraising event, a karaoke night, which we collected from $660. This will allow us to give 10 swimming sessions for five children. We're trying to get people involved to help us reach Making Graves mission in Lebanon. I noticed that pe people in Lebanon don't have big awareness about disabilities, and mostly who help are people who have uh, disabled people around us. And I have learned that we should spread and increase more awareness about disabilities so people will get more involved and interested in this topic. So I wanted to be really brief so that we could get back to um, asking Fadi and a lot of questions because that's the main reason I'm here is to kind of understand where they're coming from. I've got a relatively boring life compared to them. But I'd like to finish off with the story nonetheless. And I'd like you guys to kind of take this away as a message of this presentation. So, the curious fish was asked by the water bearer to jump into his barrel and to take the journey home with them. And so he did just that. And after several miles of silence, the fish said, are you going to tell me what the lesson of the story is? So the water bearer said, fish, I want you to look at the path that I have taken. Do you see how on the left there are flowers that grow, while on the right there, is, there are none? So while to you my bucket may be broken, to all these flowers it is the greatest source of life. So fish you must remember and you must all remember that just because it's cracked does not mean it's broken. <laughs>